Hello, everybody. Welcome to episode three of Superman Week here on the channel. I thought I heard something. Anyways, um, today I'm going to give you guys my favorite Superman villains of all time. Now, in my opinion, I think Superman has a very underrated, underappreciated rogues gallery. I think his rogues gallery is one of the best in all the comics and fiction. But that, of course, is just my opinion. So let me give you the rundown of some of my favorite Superman villains of all time. I'm going to start off with Vril Dox, a.k.a. Brainiac. This character I've been a fan of for many, many years now. I think he's one of the greatest comic book villains ever created. I think he's one of the greatest Superman villains ever created. And I would really would love for him to get his big screen debut sometime in the future, hopefully, and probably in another Superman movie down the line. We get to see that. I hope it comes to fruition because he's such a great character. He's really interesting. He's really compelling. And he's just that dude, in my opinion. Next up is John Corbin, a.k.a. Metal, the Terminator-like cyborg powered by a heart made of pure green kryptonite. Uh, I've always liked the Metallo. I've always liked the fact that he's not just a guy, that he is a... Always gives Superman a run for his money, and I loved how he has been betrayed in various forms of media, especially in particular the DC Animated Universe, in which he was voiced by legendary British actor Malcolm McDowell. I thought that was pretty damn cool. Um... Next up is Manchester Black. Now, Manchester Black is one of those characters that appeared during the modern era of comics. He made his very first appearance in Action Comics 775, you know, back in 2001, and was a part of the legendary and iconic What's So Funny About True Justin the American Wade story arc, which was written by Joan Kelly and drawn by Doug Monkey. Monkey, I think his name. Doug Monkey, I think. I hope I said that name correctly. Anyway, I've always liked Manchester Black. I always like the fact that he always likes to challenge Superman's sense of morality, his look on life, and stuff like that. I've always liked that about him, and, you know, he helped form the Elite, which was basically their version of the Authority, but more evil, I guess. I'm sorry, but more evil, if you will. Next up on the list is Mongo, the super strong... Titanic Warlord from Warworld, and, you know, he's always given Superman a run for his money, he's always given the Man of Steel a pretty good fight throughout the years, whether we're talking about the Bronze Age and the Modern Age of Comics, he's always given the Man of Steel a run for his money, and I've always liked that about him. Uh, I think he's another guy that needs to get a big shot on the big, big, a shot at the big screen on the big screen, excuse me, I can't even talk straight. Um, I really think, you know, he should really be given a shot. You know, I think he's really that good of a character. I loved how he was portrayed in the DC animated universe. I've always liked that about Mongo, that he's just, you know, wants to take over the universe. You know, that type of guy that always wants to take down Superman. But he, he's a really cool, intimidating, physically intimidating, imposing villain that, you know... He's, the, he's a fan favorite for a reason. That's all I'm going to say. Next up on the list is Atomic Skull. I always like that he can provide project energy blast that could, you know, stun Superman and hurt Superman for a while. Uh, next is Livewire, who's basically a female Electro. Made her debut during the DC Animated Universe. Then when it became so popular, she became, she eventually would transition to the comic books. <laughs> Into the mainstream DC continuity, excuse me. Next up is Silver Banshee. Uh, she can project a very powerful sonic scream that can hurt Superman's ears. She's very strong. She can fly. She's pretty durable. You know, that type of stuff. You know, she, she's a very interesting character to me. So, next up is Henry Hank Henshaw, aka Cyborg Superman. Now, he made it became a villain during the reign of the Superman story to get revenge on Superman, for he felt that he failed to save them in time because they were harmed by radiation poisoning, which, you know, killed most of his crew, so. Um, who else, who else, who else? Uh, Rudy Rudolph Jones, a.k.a. the Parasite, the energy vampire that can absorb and drain people of their powers as well as 
you know, maintain their powers for periods of time. Always like that about him. Um, next up is Toy Man. Toy Man is a character that can, can turn a simple childish toy into a deadly weapon. I've always found that to be creepy, yet cool at the same time. That's what I've always liked about Toy Man. Uh, let's see, who else, who else, who else that I do like about Superman's Rose Gallery? Oh, General Zod, how can I forget him? Come, son of Jero, kneel before Zod. I mean, how can I forget Zod? He's a classic, legendary, and iconic villain for a reason. So, yeah. Um... <sighs> Excuse me, sorry about that. Um, um, trying to think who else. Who else, who else, who else? Lobo's not really a Superman villain. Mr. Misty is Pitalix more of a foil. Bizarro's more of a foil. Ultraman's is basically an evil version of Superman from a parallel Earth. Um, that's all I can really think of at this moment. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed my list. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace. Oh, and stay tuned for tomorrow. Tomorrow's the... Uh, 86th anniversary.